So, growing up, you had a father who played in the CFL. Yeah. And you were born and raised in Alberta. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, but as an infant... Born, born in Alberta, but raised in Seattle. Though. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, born in Alberta, as an infant, moved to right. Seattle. Right, yeah, yeah. And your father kept on playing... Right. ...football, raised four boys. Yep. You, yep. Him and your mom raised four boys. Yep. And your brother played in the NBA for a while. Yep, Charlotte Bobcats for two years, yeah. He was, um, he was playing for the Charlotte Bobcats when I was playing for the Minnesota Vikings, okay. which was it's pretty surreal, you yeah. know, to say the least, to have two athletes uh, in two different sports professionally at the same time. So that was uh, an absolute joy. You're actually, you and your brother are one of only two duos to ever have. One brother in the NFL and one in the NBA. So That's what I heard. Cool. I thought it was a really good, fun fact if anybody wants to stump, stump an individual that nobody would really think <laughs> of uh, But I'm proud of it, though. I am proud of it. I was more proud of him being in the NBA than I was proud of myself being in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So that's how much of a fan I am of my brothers. That's great. So you went to O'Day High School. O'Day High School, all boys school, yeah. All boys school, great school. Great school, really good school, yeah. yeah. In Seattle. Um, I wanted to go on and be a Husky. Yeah, 100%. But it sounds like Nevada put up a bigger fight. Yeah, it was weird because when um, the coaching staff reached out to me from Nevada, they were very adamant about wanting me in. I went to a running school in high school. I only had like 16 catches my senior year. And they came and sat in my house, me, my mom, and dad, and they said, well, you only had 16 catches the whole season your senior year. We can get you that in one game. And I thought, that's virtually impossible. You know, I'm such a team guy. I didn't think that really existed in my mind, my young 17-year-old mind. And then you fast forward, you know, three years later, and you know, I caught 19 in one game. So, you know, talk about a school and a university being true to their word and me sticking with a program. It's pretty surreal that that happened. But and you still I did. That I, record. I, I do. I do, yeah. It was, um, it was a trip, man. I, I, enjoyed, I did want to be Husky. And to be honest, I'm, I'm a Husky at heart. You know, my dad was a Husky, my brother was a Husky. I wanted to be Husky, but, uh, you know, circumstances work out the way they're supposed to. Yeah. And I think I was meant to be a, a Wolfpack alum. It worked out well there for you. Yeah. Great time and led to a third round draft pick for yeah. the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. How'd you feel about that? I was I was shocked. You know, I actually I was sitting there, didn't have no big party, it was just me, my mom, my dad, a couple of close friends and I fell asleep first two rounds. <laughs> You know, and I'm sitting there and I'm watching and I didn't fall asleep because I thought I should be drafted earlier. I just the concept of being in the NFL it wasn't what I've always expected. So I wasn't sitting there on the edge of my seat thinking this was a life-changing moment. I just thought this is just another moment in my life that I'm going to do something different. You know, I've, I've made the step from college to pro, and now I'm going to be a professional athlete. And when I got the call from the Minnesota Vikings, it was Mike Tice, the head coach. He said, hey, are you ready to be a Minnesota Vikings? Literally half awake. And I said, oh, Clear my throat? Yeah, 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 coach, I am. And he said, well, you don't sound too excited, son. I was like, well, I'm sorry. I was just taking a nap. And he laughed. I laughed. He said, okay, we'll see you in Minnesota soon. And at that moment, I realized that, you know, a new journey has begun. Amazing. Yeah. And then Seahawks snatched you up. Seahawks snatched me up, yeah. Three years later. Played in Seattle for four years. Yeah. How was that experience? You, you know, you were able to play under Holmgren for a while, legend, coaching legend. Yeah. What was that like? It was an ex anxiety, adrenaline filled four years. You know, I got there initially and I thought to myself, everybody in the stands knows who I am. Or my third grade teacher is out there watching me or like my first grade crush is in the stands. For some reason I had this like image of everybody I knew being there watching me at, at one time. Um, the city embraced me and I was just, uh, I was thrilled, you know. Understanding that football doesn't work itself out like that. There's a lot of guys that go their whole careers. They can play 10 years and never be on the team that they grew up watching or in the city they grew up in. So. I was able to like get lost in the fact that I was playing in Seattle and I'm from Seattle. 
and I can invite 20 people to a game. So after four years in Seattle, you went on to Detroit. Yeah. You were there for about four years. Yeah. Enjoyed bringing Detroit back a little bit. Oh, sure. man. It was, um, it was a, a lot of misconceptions about the city. I had no idea. I had no ties, no family, no friends. Didn't know anybody on the team. They just came off a Owen 16 season. People were telling me not to sign there. I remember going to the locker room and um, one of the guys that I knew, he came up to me and said, hey man, why'd you sign here? This is the graveyard of NFL players' careers. Well, speaking with, with what's on your heart, with all the recent allegations and um, some of the negative press the NFL is getting lately, how do you how do you feel about the recent developments? Do you think they've always been there and they're just getting pressed right now? And do you think there's going to be any major changes the NFL is going to take in the future? I think that the NFL has always done a great job in recruiting, you know, quotations. The NFL is different than college. You know, college, you just find the best athlete, try to help them acclimate to the college atmosphere. NFL, you find the best athlete, you research the athlete. You do an investigation on athlete. You find out his background. And when I got in, that was a big deal. Um, what we're finding out now is that there's certain situations that we haven't addressed as an organization or as a league or as a machine. And I think that was the, the biggest deal in this last year in the NFL. Roger Goodell in the NFL had to address certain things that weren't at the forefront. I think we'll be okay. A message to send to these college players that are getting out of college, going to entering the NFL, where you're expected to grow up and and really it, it get to a higher state of maturity in a very fast, yeah. at a very fast pace. If you had a message to send out to them, what would that be? It was a linebacker, a veteran linebacker. I came in as a rookie. He said to me, he said, Nate, um, you know, be careful uh, of what you do in the NFL because this league will exaggerate both your strengths and your weaknesses. And I thought to myself, oh, okay, all right. You know, I was 21. But then as I got older, I realized that it's so true. So if you have weaknesses, minimize those. Because that magnifying glass we talked about, it's going to blow it up. If you have strengths, it's going to do the exact same thing. So the only advice I can give to young guys is take your weaknesses, and minimize them as much as you can. And build your strengths so that it's so much of who you are that when you do make a mistake, you're not crucified. That's great. That's wonderful. The positive message to send. Yeah. And then I've taken enough of your time today, so I just really have one last question. What's up? Are you done playing in the NFL? I'm not done right now. I'm not officially retired. Yeah. But it's hard, though, when you got to a great network that flies you down to LA to talk football on TV. <laughs> um, let's just say temporarily I've traded my cleats in for a suit okay. and um, the suit's fitting me well. But don't get it twisted. I got a lot of routes left in these legs. But at the same time, I, uh, I look at some of these young guys and if I have to take a roster spot for a young guy to lose his, I'd rather sit out. Generous of you. Yeah. Well, I know you're a major staple in the Seattle community. Yeah. So, should you ever leave to go play again and not in Seattle, I'm sure you'd be sorely missed. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you so much. Well, Nate, thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you. All right.